Hi everyone, just want to show you where the magic is happening for my short film. So this is my little animation space, 7 foot by 9 foot, tiny, <laughs> very hot with these Dan lights as well. Uh, so I might as well show you the progression that I have with the set. Um, it's coming along nicely, um, not quite the way that I had imagined because I had also, I had basically imagined that this uh, run here would be a separate element so it would sit out sort of like uh best way to describe it is like a separate freestanding piece so that when the camera moves this would move with it but i'm having to change that idea now by having it um attached on so some of you might probably asking if i'm going to be animating a puppet coming from out of there how do i get into it or well, simply if i can just do it easily there we go so that comes away, the trees will be able to come away, I just need to put in little uh, attachments in there so they can be uh, find their original spots again. But yeah, so it's uh, just a simple bit of wood, just to lock it down in place. And a ton of hot glue, which is always fun with these sort of things. Um, just trying to disguise the edge of the table at the moment, so I'm sticking on expanding foam cut off pieces which are sticking on the edge so all this should be blended in a little bit better but hopefully you won't see that during the camera shoots anyway um, and then this is another element that can be taken away if needed I don't think I should have to but it's just for the ease of animation I think and then this over here this is basically the expanding foam that's here that's the first stage of it um, but over here this is the plaster covered version so this has um, plaster bandage underneath but then it's just had filler painted over the top of it so I don't know if you can actually see but I've kept all the paintbrush striations in there so hopefully once this is painted those striations will become the individual layers of rock that will uh, add a bit of colour and texture into it and then these are the uh, I think there's about 13 is there of these? Uh, 3, 6, 9, 10 no, 12, sorry, 12. 12 of these uh, cast branches. So we've got the master just hidden here. Uh, that was a fun mold to make. So uh, probably going to have to cast a few more of these actually. And looking at the set now, although it looks quite thick in on this angle, um, when it actually comes to shooting, this needs to be a little bit more denser. So I might cast another three or four just to put in there. Um, as filler and then of course I need to make a, a board for here which I'm not sure if I'm going to do practical or digital uh, this is going to that's going to have to be basically a matte painting so I can either do that as a green screen which I can then have a digital rendition of, of a matte painting in there which would be the modern equivalent or I could go the traditional route and actually have a, a piece of board there with the painting um, of the, the background perspective going out there um, as for this wall, I'm not sure what to do yet. I'm in two minds whether to do the same, whether to go green screen or uh, traditional matte painting, because it is quite a large space, as you can see. Um, I mean, that's a that's basically a four foot long table, so the whole area on that back wall is going to have to be um, a, a blue screen element, effectively. So it's either... I somehow managed to persuade the university to give me a board that big to paint green for the green screen or that I'm just going to have to do a matte painting and just drop it on a curtain cloth or something I don't know yet but uh, I'll get there with it eventually but um, but yeah so what I'm going to be doing here probably tomorrow now is this is covered a uh, perforated st uh, sheet steel that's uh, covered in masking tape so what I'm then going to do is get a uh, uh, newspaper sheets with um, oh, what do you call it now? Uh, PVA water mix and basically just carpet the whole thing in that. Not making it too thick, but thick enough that it'll hopefully keep all these running these bits that keep popping up down. Uh, and then I'm going to do a PVA uh, sawdust mix over the top of it to give it a nice earthy texture. But there's still plenty to do. I still need to attach this guy on, which is um, something I bought from a, a pet shop quite a few years ago, which is good. Uh, and then after that, I need to sort through all this stuff. This is my collection of stuff that I've been saving for just this day since 2005. And it's not just contained to this box. There's also this box in here, and it's just full of 
weird and wonderful things. And where's the now? There's um, I'm really wanting to make sure I incorporate these actually. So I found these when I was living in Blackpool. There's a, um, I think it's like a fir tree or a pine tree that actually gives off these acorns. And I really like these. I really want these to be an alien plant on Mars. So, um, so I want, really want to incorporate those. And then we've got disused trees. That, again, I've been saving up for probably about 2005, 2006. Um, all sorts of stuff. And of course, this little thing here, which is what I made back in... Uh, what is this now? This must have been about oh, 2012 actually. This is when I was actually getting ready to meet Ray actually I made that. So that's uh, definitely going to be staying in the set. I'm probably going to have to make some adjustments to it because this is now going to be the bush that the, uh, the Allosaurus eats before the Rex comes into play. So that's going to have to change. Um, anything else that I can probably show you guys? Um, I think that's pretty much it actually. There's not much to show i mean there's there's still plenty to show but nothing in the way that i think uh, is new to everybody's uh, ears uh, oh actually a uh, recent purchase from uh, hobbycraft so we've got some lovely ferns and these will be going trimming these down so effectively cutting them to scale so probably something like that tip there and then attaching them just dotting around the woodland park because all this all this area is going to be barren so that's uh, that can't have too much in the way of bits and pieces uh, and then we've got some other acorns and seeds and stuff that i've salvaged that might be useful for alien wildlife and another hobbycraft purchase which i don't know if i'll end up using them but i thought they were quite interesting to say the least and then last but not least uh, some of these as well, which are quite desert-like, which I, I like. Uh, ooh, sugar. And of course, all the paints over there. My Jurassic Park coffee mug, which has been saving me quite a few evenings this uh, past couple of months. So yeah, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, really. Uh, oh, salvaging a few of my original trees from 2004. So that's one of them. As you can see, the base is uh, a little bit worse for wear, so that'll need a bit of uh, fixing. Um, and I was going to include, I don't know if I can get to it actually, there we go, there was this that I made again back in 2004, I was hoping to include so as a, um, the idea of these were kind of like it was a mangrove tree type thing but these actually grew in the woodland so they would spread themselves out, grow, anchor themselves to rocks uh, and then just grow vertically up, but um, unfortunately, it's uh, it's just not quite right for this set. Unfortunately, because I had planned it to be somewhere around about here, but yeah, the, the it just doesn't look right now, which is uh, which is a shame. But I'm still going to keep hold of it. You know, it might come in handy for uh, another future projects. Assuming that I've uh, got space by the end of it, and my fiance doesn't divorce me afterwards. <laughs> So that's about it. Um, yeah, I can't really say much else on this at the moment. So it's uh, more or less 10 minutes worth of me rambling on. Hopefully you've seen something of interest in here. Um, but yeah, um, let me know what you think. Uh, the, the, the GoFundMe is still open as well. So if you want to donate the minimum, which I think is still five pounds, unfortunately, um, feel free to, to drop a donation there. I've also got some wire sculptures uh, for sale. Um, that I'm hoping will generate a bit of income for me to, to do this, finish this off. I've basically got to October 2019 now, so it's not long now. I think it's only like four or five months away, so I, I need to crack on with things. Um, and on a side note, which is part of the reason why I'm trying to push the whole sale and donations things a bit, um, I might have a narrator for this short now, for the beginning and the ending of the film, and it is looking quite likely to be Caroline Munro from the Harryhausen film um, The Golden Voyage of Sinbad. She was also in uh, Hammer Horror Dracula and she was also a, I think she was a villain in one of the James Bond movies with Roger Moore. So she's not exactly cheap. I mean, she's cheaper compared to other people I've been looking at, but she's certainly not cheap. So if you can donate anything or if you feel like you want to buy one of my Y sculptures, please, please, anything you can. Because to make this dream come a reality would be amazing. But to also give you guys something worthwhile watching 
and not just listening to me rabble on about oh I'm going to do this and look at that and this that and the other it would be nice to actually be able to pump something out that I think you guys will really really enjoy and uh, everyone that I've been speaking to about it has really enjoyed looking at this project so yeah there we go then so take care guys and I shall see you hopefully in the not too distant future